to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. All right. Good morning, America, and you are listening to America's Voice Now. You joined us in our third segment out of four. We're halfway through our program this morning. And we're talking about um, the unbelievable levels of of, uh, overreach that we're seeing in every facet of our lives. And a lot of that is engendered by these administrative agencies that don't have any justification for their existence, at least not legal or constitutional. They have no authority to exist other than that usurped and given to them by Congress, which we never subdelegated. We never gave Congress the authority to take our limited power of attorney handed to them in trust. And we never gave them the authority or the power to say, here, you can deal with this. These people who run these agencies, they are not elected. We don't know their names. We don't know their histories. We don't know their political viewpoints. We don't know their good and bad sides. We have no way to hold them accountable. We can't remove them from office if we don't like their actions. Ladies and gentlemen, that is tyranny. When your government, whom you have given elected support to, follows through and subdelegates that to individuals which you have not authorized or approved, well, I'm reminded again to give you this quote from, from Jefferson. An elective despotism was not the government we fought for, but one which should not only be founded on true free principles, but in which the powers of government should be so divided and balanced among general bodies of magistracy as that no one could transcend their legal limits without being effectually checked and restrained by the others. So I'm asking you now, who checks and restrains the EPA? Who checks and restrains the DHS, the ATF, the NSA, the CIA, the FBI? Who is going to restrain the DHS and ICE? and Customs Enforcement from from leaving the gates wide open with willful malicious intent to allow unlimited abuse of our borders. Homeland Security, in an article out on LA Times this morning, or yesterday I should say, says Homeland Security is considering two major changes to ease deportations. So not only are we allowing them into the country, but when we do catch them, by those overworked, unprotected, and unbacked border patrol agents who are actually trying to do their job, but then we don't deport them. And they're not only not deporting them, they're trying to figure out ways to loophole the law. Homeland Security officials are considering two major policy changes. Policy based on what? You don't have the authority to make policy because that policy parades about as law. And no agency constitutionally has the authorization to make law. If you don't believe it, go look it up in your constitution. And no Congress has the authority to give our authority to someone else. They want to scale back deportations of immigrants in the country illegally to comply with President Obama's executive order for, quote, more humane enforcement efforts. So now you have 
an agency created by Congress that they had no permission or authority to create, who is now not taking the orders from Congress, but is in fact taking the orders from the executive, who has already shown us a predisposition to violate every tenant that the nation was built upon. He's actively engaging in lawless, unconstitutional behavior. And they're going to implement it. The first change that they're trying to do would be to ease or stop deportations of foreigners who have no criminal convictions other than immigration violations. Well, the truth is, it's not a question of whether or not you have a, another criminal conviction. If you violated our border and our sovereignty, you are a criminal, period. And until that gets resolved, nothing else happens. The other change that they're considering would scale back controversial pro a controversial program that's known as Secure Communities. It allows the immigration authorities to request that immigrants in the country illegally be held in local jails until they can be transferred to federal facilities for deportation. Now, the problem there, of course, is that, one, many local jails don't have the wherewithal in small towns around the country to house these people. Secondarily, who's going to pay for it? Because it makes no sense for the federal government to pay small local jails. The truth is, this, this concept of deportation isn't really that difficult. I don't know why it has to take months and months and months of court. You can literally shuffle a few hundred of them through a day. Do you have any documentation that supports your existence here in the United States? No. End of, end of case, deported. Next. Do you have any documentation that supports your, authoriz your authorized entry into the United States of America? No. Case closed. Next. And hey, listen, I can run through a thousand of those a day. Is that due process? Absolutely. Justify your existence here, legally, or you're out. A second catch would result in a tattoo being emplaced upon them. A third attempt with that tattoo, open season. You see, our borders are sovereign. And if you look at the immigration policies of any of the South American countries or any, uh, including Mexico, you'll find that they don't tolerate violators of their sovereignty. Cross their border and see what happens. First of all, if you're fortunate, you may survive the event, but only if you're fortunate. So I'm tired of hearing about how we need more humane treatment. What is humane about the individuals coming here and taking resources that we cannot use for our own needs, our own starving children, our own unhealthy children, our own homeless, our own jobless. Where is it written that we must become the catch basin for the world to throw their chaff, not their wheat, because we discourage the wheat, This government doesn't want intelligent, legal immigrants. They don't want those who are educated, hardworking. They want those who will do as they're told. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, it's only a matter of time until this thing reaches the point of no return. Then over the weekend, it came out about a Wyoming welder who's facing a $75,000 a day 
fines from the EPA because he built a stock pond on his own eight acre piece of property with state permits in hand authorizing the development of the pond. But you know what the you know what the EPA says? It doesn't really matter what your state agency said. You're violating the Clean Water Act and you built a dam on a creek without a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers. So you've got 30 days to remove it and make it all good again. And in addition to that, I mean, the, the, the time limits are, I, I'll have to find them for you in the article here, but let me, let me just uh, tell you what, the, what, um, what uh, Johnson, who's the owner of this thing, says. Uh, he followed the state rules when he built the pond in 2012, and he has a letter from the Wyoming State Engineer's Office. The agency has since informed him, again, that his, quote, permit is in good standing and is entitled to be exercised exactly as permitted. He says he refuses to remove the pond, nor will he pay the EPA's fine. It's about a person's rights, he says. I have three little kids, and I'm not going to roll over and let the government tell me what I can do with my land. I followed the rules. Now, he's gotten his state lawmakers involved, and frankly, this sentence in the letter that they've sent to the EPA ought to alert the rest of you who have ignored my previous notices about what the EPA is trying to do under their, re new, their new reinterpretation of the Clean Water Act. Here's what they said. Fairness and due process require the EPA base its compliance order on more than an assumption. Instead of treating Mr. Johnson as guilty until he proves his innocence by demonstrating his entitlement to the Clean Water Act Section 404 uh, stock pond exemption, the EPA should make its case that a dam was built and that the Section 404 exemption does not apply. Now, the idea here, of course, is that when you are talking about government, we have the basic premise concept that you have to be proven that, or it has to be proven that you are guilty, not that you have to prove yourself innocent. I mean, where is it written? Where does it make sense? Where have you ever heard the, pre the premise or the concept that you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent? That's only in totalitarian, authoritarian fascist dictatorships that you hear that. We've seen case after case after case after case just like this from the EPA. Moreover, the EPA is attempting to institute new rules that give them control over all water, public and private, across the nation. Anything that would ultimately touch navigable waters. The only thing that the Clean Water Act actually authorizes them to have jurisdiction over. And with all due respect, I don't think they've got jurisdiction to do anything because they don't have a right constitutionally, legally to exist. How many more times can I say that? The EPA has no right to exist. Do I want clean water? Of course, I have to drink it. My children drink it. Do I want clean air? Of course, I have to breathe it. My family has to breathe it. You have to breathe it. We all want that. But that is not what they're trying to accomplish here. What they're trying to accomplish here is the furtherance of their authority and their power. That's their goal. It has nothing to do with whether or not there's clean air and clean water. The truth is, this guy, I mean, he says that this goes a lot further than a pond. It's about a person's rights. And he's absolutely correctly, co correct in that statement. I've not paid them a dime, nor will I, he says. I agree. 
the letter from these two, from these uh, three re representatives, uh, two of them are senators and one's a House representative, say that they are troubled by Johnson's case. They shouldn't be stating that they're troubled. They should be writing a letter telling the EPA, you either justify these actions or your budget is completely wiped out until you do. Every penny is on hold and frozen. Instead, they throw a bunch of language in there. And I'll grant you the language is valuable, but I, I don't see it as a, as a, I don't see it as what it ought to be. You see, either Congress has authority over the EPA or the tail is now wagging the dog. Fairness and due process require the EPA base its compliance order on more than an assumption. The EPA is told, has responded back in saying, we'll evaluate any additional information received and all of the facts regarding the case. If you trust that, you're a fool. I've got some oceanfront property in downtown Phoenix that is a perfect buy for you. The truth is that the EPA is now looking to expand their authority to include ponds, lakes, wetlands, creeks, man-made or natural, by the way. It would have the, any, any water that would have an effect on downstream navigable waters on both public and private land. So let's understand something. All water has an impa impact on downstream navigable water if you go far enough back. It's interesting that the EPA wants to follow the water, but nobody wants to follow the money. Why doesn't the same principle apply? My question is, if this is how the EPA is handling this given situation, and they want even more authority, more power, more abusive force to be placed at their disposal, how can we ever, ever grant or approve that? The EPA is also going after wood stoves. I mean, guys, the wood stove thing is just insane. There's not a single wood stove manufactured in the nation right now that could pass the requirements associated with this new wood stove rating system. And, you know, I get it. Nobody, nobody in government has ever been out here. None of them have ever been here. They all just, they fly over here and they look down upon the peon and the, and the peasantry and they, you know, they feel sorry for us or whatever. But I can tell you that in the Midwest, <coughs> in probably 30 out of the 50 states, wood is a significant source of fuel for family homes to, heat, to be heated. And these people have unilaterally determined, in their infinite wisdom, sitting in their comfy homes supplied by electric or natural gas, that you don't have the right to do that. Get the hell out of here that noise. Yesterday, and I'm going to wrap the segment with this, the ATF raided Ares Armor. Now, Ares Armor was a company that sold lower receivers in an unfinished format that you could basically get home, put onto a drill press, and within a few minutes have a lower that you would be able to make your own AR-15. But it wasn't considered a gun, so it didn't have to have a serial number, and they could ship it right to your house. This is by the ATF's own definition. They even got a restraining order the other day in court to prohibit the ATF from seizing their customer list. Now, given the fact that we've seen all of this overreach on the part of the ATF before, by the part of the IRS, and so forth and so on, why would anyone want to give the ATF or any federal agency their customer list? I mean, it's a prosecution persecution list. Well, they got the, they got the restraining order changed 
and they went in and raided them yesterday. I don't know what whether they got the lists or not. I have no idea. I would hope that Ares would have been smart enough to wipe out everything they had. Because now the ATF will have a list of all the people that have bought a piece of metal that could potentially be made into a gun. And the next thing you'll see is now them racing about, knocking on doors. Where is it? we got to have it right now. There's 10 agents out here, and you're completely surrounded. <sighs> Guys, what part of it's over don't you get? What part of the party's done don't you get? We, as a republic, are finished, or we're going to go down fighting. The problem is, I'm not seeing anybody stand up to fight. The problem is, I see everyone frightened, silent, hushed. Shh, don't talk about that. They're listening. Well, you can sit silently. You can be acquiescent. You can do what the people did in Germany during the 30s when they saw it coming and still just refused to stand up and do the right thing. You can do that, but don't expect a different or unique result. Don't expect that because this is America, the results are going to be any different. In fact, you can expect it to be orders of magnitude worse. Why do I say that? Because, goodness gracious, if the Nazis only had the authority and the power and the documentation and the surveillance capabilities that these people have, we might all be speaking German right now. The truth is, we've lost our country. And the time is going to be very, very short for us to retain it and take it back. And November is not your answer, ladies and gentlemen. It's only one step in the process. Please don't tell me that you're waiting for November to come and see how that works out. Please don't tell me that. We're going to take a break. We'll return in just a moment. You're listening to America's Voice now.